This is the half hitch. It is used to secure the end of a rope with a grasping method. It can be used to tie off items such as a boat fender as a starting knot for a ridge line or something similar or to grasp a stick or rock to throw, over, to throw your rope over a branch. It is a fairly strong and secure knot and simple to tie. To uh, make this line you'll wrap it around once and hold the top while you cross it over and then take the second side, wrap it around the other side, tuck it under and give it a little cinch and you'll notice you'll have two nice parallel lines with the crossover and that's the hitch knot. This is the bowline. It creates a very strong fixed loop which is useful for almost anything. Since it does not grasp the item, it is preferred for occurrences like making a foothold or pulling a person out of a ravine. You start the bowline with a simple loop, and it, it matters which is on top here, but if you get it wrong, uh, the knot just won't tie. The end or the rabbit comes out the hole, around the tree or around the working line, and back into the hole. You then want to grab the two parallel lines in the working line and pull tight. Really good cinching knots have a way to get themselves undone rather easily called breaking its back. And so what you'll do here is flip the bowline over and you'll notice this loop here and you want to push on this loop next to the working end until the working end loops a little free and then the entire thing just falls apart. This is an adjustable friction knot. It is used for securing and tightening lines in lighter situations or basically when you don't want the complexity of a trucky knot or don't have enough end rope for a trucky knot. Uh, this is an excellent for tightening tarp eyelets to pegs as an example. So you'll take the tail end and wrap it around an object and then start wrapping itself around the working line uh, three or four times the more times you wrap it around the more friction you get. After you wrap it you'll get it all neat and organized and then wrap it around the, the tail line and feed it through and tighten uh, the ends of the tail line to each other. Now the working line is basically straight through here and you want to pull on the working line beyond the knot and then slide the knot to a location where you want the friction to hold. To undo it, you just slide the knot to release the tension and then work it free. This is the truck E or trucker hitch. It provides huge leverage to secure a load very tightly, generated from its 3 to 1 pulley advantage. Besides securing loads, you can adapt it to make ridge lines or work off the center loop. So you start with a loop, and just like the bow line, it matters which is on top, but if you get it wrong, it just won't tie. You'll reach through the loop, reach through the loop and grab the uh, tail end and pull it through like a quick release type knot. Then grab the working end in half of the quick release and pull tight to make a knot. At this point the knot is still unstable until you stick something through the quick release end. At this point you could get creative and stick a, a stick or a rod through there or you could stick a rope, the end of a rope, either in a loop or send that rope off to a different direction. Um, as an alternative to what uh, pulley system it was created. But I'm going to loop my tail in down through the bottom step of the ladder here, which would be your normal pulley on a truck or whatever, and then feed it up back through the quick release loop. And now I can have that uh, tail end down there. That end tail end is a 3 to 1 mechanical advantage. So now you can just pull the crap out of this thing like three times your body weight and uh, when you get to a, to a tightness you feel is good just pinch off the point there and maybe put a two or three half hitches and uh, you're good to go.
Now, if the load shifts on you or you just want to retighten it, you'll have to undo these half hitches, give it another yank, tie it back up again, or ultimately when you're ready to be done, you just feed it back out the loop. And finally, grab the knot, pull the quick release, and it's undone. This is a fancy knot for tying ropes together, particularly different diameters. I'll just call it the fancy knot. Start by bending the larger diameter back upon itself, creating an end loop. Feed the second line through the loop, around all the way around both sides, back underneath itself, and then through the loop again. Give all ends a tug and then give the two working lines a tug. And if you notice the larger diameter starting to slip on the second side, then you probably did it wrong. This is a simple fishing knot. It's a simple way to tie two lines together rather than the fancy knot we just uh, discussed. It's good for tying a leader to main line or any other application like that. Start with the two line ends opposing each other and get some overlap. And then I'm going to tie uh, the yellow one into a simple knot around the green one. And then I'll come back to the other side, of course, and, and tie the green one in a simple knot around the yellow one. Then you'll have two sliding knots. If you pull the working ends, those sliding knots will eventually collide together and form a nice line. This is the simple jug holder knot. It's used to hold a bottle or a jug. So basically do the fishing, simple fishing knot and then be, but before you tie the two, uh, before the loop, the, cinch the loop, stick the bottle through the loop and then cinch it up. This is the bottle sling. It's a fairly complex and fancy bottle, bottle holder knot. I typically forget how to tie this one most times, but you're welcome to try. So you begin by finding like the midpoint or whatever, somewhere in the middle, make a little loop. And then you're going to fold it over to make like a pair of bunny ears. You need to fold this to the front. So then you're going to slide one of the two loops. I call that the front loop. I'm using the right one here. Um, over the other one, that introduces a little bit of a twist, creates a hole in the background there. And on my right hand, I've got the original folded over. I'm going to push that through the two strands and back up through the hole. Then you're supposed to fold the front and back loops over and around and get them into some kind of configuration where you got the four loops going out. Okay, I think I got this right. Um, all four are pointing out. They, they all point on different quadrants of the uh, where the jug is going to go through it. If you get this wrong, then they'll like all be on one side, right? You know, of the it'll just look like a loop around the jug head. Um, so good luck. So the next thing to do is insert the jug head and then you got four lines to pull. This is the stopper knot. It is used at the end of a line to grab onto or to stop in a pulley. Typically people overhand this knot and that jams and dries out to a spot where it needs to be cut off. So I'm showing a twist that allows you to break the knots back so it'll release. This is the end of the line, and I'm first going to do a simple overhand knot, and I won't tighten it all the way. Um, this is what you don't want to do because it will um, cinch up and you'll have to cut it off. So instead, you start like an overhand, but at, at, on the working side, you wrap it around once and then come back through the other way. 
and that gives you your stopper but if you flip it over here you can see you got the loop near the working end where you can go break its back and get it undone. This is the figure eight non-twist braided rope coil method. That's a mouthful. It's used for storage of ropes but I used it for all similar things such as hoses or electrical cords. I'm going to defer my rope coiling demonstration to this excellent video from APS and Carl which is available on YouTube. I'll put the link below. He explains the twisted method and the non-twisted method, which is the uh, figure eight. And I've snipped the non-twist method and the hanging ending options as follows. Okay, so the correct way to do this is, again, open palm, working in to start with. I take a full arm length. What I was doing before was I was introducing twist. Now there will be no twist. I'm just going to do a straight handoff, and you'll notice the line has figure eight. And that's what I want. That's a healthy looking coil. And I'm just going to do this time and again, and I'm just going to stack them one on top of the other. Okay, I've finished coiling this line with the no twist added figure eight design. Very healthy. I'm going to show you the performance difference. I'm just going to toss this down, run the same line through the same block, and you'll notice there's no hockling, there's no twists. The line just runs smoothly through the block all the way to its end. Okay, now I'm back to this healthy figure eight um, coil. And now I need to secure it, cinch it down for storage. Uh, storing is either hanging it uh, by tying it off to something or cinching it down and just throwing it into a storage locker. Um, I'm going to show you the hanging one. I'm going to take at least a loop and a half or two loops worth of length. Do not start with too short a piece. You're not going to be happy at the end of this. Um, good long loop uh, length. And I'm basically going to take it in my hand and I'm going to come about a third of the way down and I'm going to cinch it with this finger and I'm going to start to wrap the line. And I'm doing this tightly. Okay. So I usually like to get a minimum of, of five in place. And I'm going to run my hand through. And for the hanging, I'm just going to pull this and pull the tail through. And that's it. This isn't going to go anywhere. And now I have the ability to do a half hitch uh, on a rail or on a hook or wherever, and I can store it. Now, if I was putting this in a locker, I really wouldn't need a tail. So I'm going to undo this. And I don't need quite this length, so I'm going to put a couple extra wraps on this. And... In this case, I'm going to run the loop through, but I'm going to run it back over the line and cinch it down. And now I've got a very sturdy piece for storage.